Hi guys, welcome back to my A2 German grammar course. Thanks for being here and learning with me. Today we have a short session. If you are a member of my Facebook group, you already know I have a little vacation time, but I still want to teach you something very new and very important today. So let's go. Before we do that, we want to go back to our last exercise. I remembered correctly. I hope I gave you the last four statements to do by yourself. Here is the correct answers. Gehört die Zeitung dir? Ist das deine Zeitung? Nein, das ist nicht meine. Gehören die Schuhe Max? Sind das seine Schuhe? Nein, das sind nicht seine. Gehören die Bücher Frau Berg? Sind das Ihre Bücher? Nein, das sind nicht Ihre. Gehören die Briefe euch? Sind das eure Briefe? Nein, das sind nicht unsere. If you have issues with the answers or you did some mistakes, feel free to go to my prior video and check this grammar rule out again. The next big topic are those verbs that are reflective. Reflexiv, we say in German, if you want to Google it or to check it out with your books or whatever. So let's start with the really basic. When we say, for example, ich wasche das Obst, I wash the fruit. We know, I said it many times, we have our typical sentence, subject, verb or action, they say here, but it's a verb, and the object. In this case, we have an accusative object because the verb requires it. I wash the fruit. The action to wash, though, can be also reflective. For example, we have option one here. Ich wasche mich. I wash myself, so to speak. The main issue or the main aspect we need to remember is that the subject and the object must be the same. Mich, in this case, in English, would be me. The second option, also for a reflective action or verb, is this one. Ich wasche mir die Hände. I wash my hands. In good English, we would say it like this. But to emphasize that I'm washing my hands, we have a reflection, but it is in dative. The object following is again accusative. So you need to remember, we will talk about it more, of course. Some actions can either reflect the subject 100% like this without any other object necessary. I wash myself, I brush my hair, ich bürste mich. Or it can also require an object further, and therefore it needs a reflection of dative. For example, I just said it, I brush myself, ich bürste mich. We can also say, ich bürste mir die Haare. I'm brushing my hair. So it really depends what you want to emphasize. And of course, what action you are saying, what verb you are saying, because not everything makes sense. So let's see what we have here in the box, in the square. Manche Verben sind immer reflexiv. What does it mean? Some verbs are always reflective. This means subject reflexiv in this case. For example, ich beeile mich. I am hurrying up. Or I hurry. Ich irre mich. I am mistaken. Ich freue mich. I'm happy. This is the first one. Where you always have to say this reflection part. You cannot say ich beeile. Or you cannot say ich irre. This is really wrong. This is why reflection verbs or reflective verbs are so important. Next one. Manche Verben können reflexiv sein. Oder sie haben ein... Accusative object. The accusative object is this part here, the gray one. Sorry if my handwriting is <laughs> worse than usual. I don't have my, my writing equipment with me. So let's see an example. We can either say, Ich fürchte mich, I'm afraid, 
Or second option, ich fürchte den Hund. I am afraid of the dog. Here we have no reflection. The third one comes now. Bei manchen Verben mit Dativ und Akkusativobjekt kann das Dativ Personobjekt ein Reflexivpronomen sein. For example, this is actually our version number two. With some verbs that have Dativ and Akkusativ Objekt, the Dativ Person Object can be a reflexive pronoun. It has not necessarily the same meaning as the subject. For example, ich kaufe dir ein Buch. I'm buying you a book. Or ich kaufe mir ein Eis. I'm buying myself an ice cream. I know this is a little bit confusing. I don't blame you if you don't understand everything. But let's give an example. We have here on the last line the verb anziehen. To wear something or to put something on. Now you have to see. Our normal. Now you have to check out the first part. It is a normal subject, verb, object. Ich ziehe einen Mantel an. I'm wearing or I'm putting on a coat. Subject, verb, object. Another way to say it. Ich ziehe mich an. I'm getting dressed. Here we have the reflection, which is accusative. Ich ziehe mich an. Now we have here two things. You see it immediately, right? You see this one and we have also an object. So we cannot say, ich ziehe mich ein Hemd an or something like this. We don't have to say it like this, but we have to use the reflexive dative in this case, which would be mir. I am putting on myself a shirt, so to speak. And as I told you before, it doesn't have to be reflective on the subject. You can also put on a shirt on, on a child or on him or whatever. Then you would say, ich ziehe ihm ein Hemd an. And here, in my opinion, you see super nice or super easy that we have a dativ. Instead of mir, instead of dressing myself, I dress him, the child or the boy or whatever. Ich ziehe ihm ein Hemd an. Those are the options. Just remember, if you have an object here in Akkusativ, you have to use a dative reflection. Just remember this for now. And of course, some variations will follow in the future. Here we have it again, super clear with our little tables. For example, the verb to sit. Sich setzen, you can even learn it in the dictionaries with sich, which is like an indication that it's reflective. Ich setze mich, I'm sitting down, I'm sitting myself, right? Du setzt dich. Er, sie, es, man, setzt sich. Wir setzen uns. Ihr setzt euch. Sie setzen sich. This you have to learn by heart. It looks super similar, of course, with the personal pronouns, but please learn it as a total separate from the accusative pronouns and such. If you want to say politely, please sit down, you have to say, Setzen Sie sich bitte. Or you want to say in a more casual way, you can sit down, you don't have to stand, right? You can say, du kannst dich setzen, you can sit down. Yeah, stuff like this. Or another one, setz dich, sit down. Remember imperative. If you don't remember, watch my A1 grammar if you want. Yeah, so this is the left part. And now we have it a little longer because... As I said, we have an object, an accusative. Therefore, we need the dative, reflexive pronouns. The verb here is to order. Bestellen. Ich bestelle mir ein Bier. I'm ordering for myself a beer. Of course, we can say ich bestelle ein Bier. I'm ordering a beer. But this is another meaning. Du bestellst dir eine Suppe. Er, sie, es, man, bestellt sich ein Wasser. Wir bestellen uns Wein. Ihr bestellt euch ein Kotelett. Sie bestellen sich einen Saft. 
just don't forget to always have these tables in mind and to really see what is reflective or what is just a person in dativ, for example, with ordering something for somebody. We have the example here. Ich bestelle ihm ein Wasser. I'm ordering a water for him. This is not reflective. This is just a verb, subject, object, dative object, and an accusative object. We learned this before. But the new thing now is to say, er bestellt sich ein Wasser. This is reflective. He orders a water for himself. So you can remember, or now you know, bestellen, to order, can be reflective, but doesn't have to be. We have many options. For example, er bestellt ein Wasser. He orders a water. This is why I told you to learn those tables separately from everything other accusative and dative related you learned so far. Don't rely on, okay, I know this. It's similar to the tables I already know. It's not the best way to do this. You should learn it with a different approach. And now you will always see if a verb can be reflective or must be reflective or is not reflective. Talking about getting easier, let's do our little exercise. You can press pause and try to change the beginning of the sentence. Let's read the example. Klaus hat Urlaub. Klaus has vacation. Klaus freut sich, denn er hat Urlaub. So Klaus is happy. So the freut sich is a fixed combination. We cannot change it. Klaus is happy or is glad excited because he has vacation. So this is the part you have to change. And you can also practice the connection with then. Ich freue mich, denn ich treffe morgen Lisa. Wir freuen uns, denn wir bekommen Besuch. Du freust dich, denn du bist wieder gesund. Carmen freut sich, denn sie hat bald Ferien. Wir freuen uns, denn wir fahren nach Portugal. Ihr freut euch, denn ihr bekommt Geschenke. This is an easier exercise because you have to change only the beginning. Later, of course, you will see, okay, is there an object? Do I have to put dative in front or is the verb not reflective and such things, but slowly. I hope you did everything correct. If not, check out the beginning of the video, check out other resources, and it will be okay. This is it for today. Thank you for your support, for watching. Please like, subscribe, share it with a friend who wants to learn German maybe. If you have questions or feedback, leave it in the comments below. And most importantly, don't give up. It's getting harder, I accept that, I know that. But step by step, you will manage everything. And you can always go back to my playlists and check them out or ask me on Facebook. Have a good week and I see you soon. Bye.